All right, guys, what's up? We're live for another ladies' night. Welcome to another show. I am on the road. You can see I'm not in my uh, normal studio. I'm in North Carolina. We're uh, tearing up the East Coast of the United States and uh, having some uh, fun on the Appalachian roads. Um, Moff, you want to kick it off and do the intro with the ladies? Yeah. Ladies, thanks for coming. We have a returning guest from last week, so um, really looking forward to this one tonight. Uh, let's first go do a quick couple of intros. So name, age, where you're from, what you do, relationship status, and then what piqued your interest on either coming on the show for the first time or uh, why you wanted to return. Let's just start with Max. Hi, my name is Max. I'm 29. I'm from Chino, California. And current relationship status, I am single. Okay. And why I wanted to join the show was actually this was actually a real big opportunity that I was actually looking into. So when it presented itself, I was just like, okay, yes. And I'm finally glad that my schedule was able to match up with your guys' schedule. Okay. Awesome. And had you seen have you have you watched any of the show before? I know we kind of chatted back and forth for a week or two trying to find schedule. Did you see any clips? Have you seen any part of the show at all? I'll be honest, I'm coming in blind, and I think that's a little bit better for me because I am so nervous about this. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, uh, that'll pass, I hope, for you. But um, cool. Caroline, welcome back. Why don't you give us your spiel? Thanks, Caroline. Almost 28, two weeks from today. Um, Recently single and... Last week, I tried to touch on the importance of self-development and mental health and faith and self-esteem and a lot of things that I planted the seeds for, and I just want to go into more detail. Okay. Yeah, you had some some things you wanted to kind of clear up because you sort of felt that there were maybe some misconceptions or some mischaracterizations Mm -hmm. on some of the things that uh, you had said. So do you have anything that you'd like to start off with? Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, for first off, when Moff reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want to come and do this podcast? I wanted, went into it very nonchalantly. Um, if people were here last week and they're here this week, like I was sitting on the floor of my apartment. I was wrapped in a blanket. I was getting over a cold. My hair was on a ponytail. No makeup, no notes. Didn't watch any of Rich's videos. Like, blind, nonchalant, uh, very chill. Um, So the people that thought I came off very vague, you're not wrong. I just was not prepared for such intense, deep um, personal questioning. Um, I will say, I don't even care about the comments that like came at me for the vocal fry and talking with my hands. I will say though, that the people that commented on Jasmine's weight was like the lowest of low and for those people that are like so insecure that they need to go trolling in the comments it's just it's just not cool and i hope that it doesn't happen this time that that's all i'm gonna say about that um it was just you know disrespectful and it's it's not being a high value human to go and be mean well, let's why don't we get to like yeah like yeah. that's only thing like you know that's, jasmine if she sees this you know she can defend herself and that kind of thing but yeah. what, what may be specific oh yeah i saw you saw you guys having a good time in the comments over the last and i days. and so negatively aside i actually had yeah. so many engagements and so many conversations that were so wonderful and so respectful and so impactful and were like filled with just like into it was intellectual and i really really appreciated it and i'll like shout some specific people out uh later and it was just most of it was actually really really incredible so i did just want to i did just want to start out with that um and then the second thing was the misconception misconceptions about me and my last relationship and i want everyone to know that there was an extreme amount of love in my relationship and they were saying like he was playing video games to escape her that's not the case at all um the only thing that ended our relationship and the main thing that i'm here to talk about was poor mental health i saw what it did to him it broke my heart the anxiety the depression the fear And I want to spread awareness about that and about mental health and how important it is to have mental clarity and confidence and self-esteem and a strong faith 
and just healthy lifestyles, including exp expressing expressing emotions and being vulnerable and all these things and these kind of sound bites that you guys have a problem with. But I do want to dig deeper into them because they are the root for a successful relationship. So I guess I just want to clarify what I meant when I was talking about emotional maturity and self-esteem and self-love and all of those things. And there was even someone in the live chat, I forget who it was, who said women are attracted to self-esteem, not money. And I know you're pushing this narrative that yes, men need to be successful and have money, but the main thing you need to have is a sense of confidence to keep a woman, to get a woman, maybe use your success, use your money, but to keep a woman, to keep a woman, it's not money, it's confidence, it's respect. We don't want abrasiveness, we don't want your coldness. We want someone who is proud and who has peace um, and, you know, is a good a good person and knows how to treat a woman. Um, I know, Moth, that you, you haven't necessarily, you didn't agree with us, you know, last time didn't agree with the live chat, that self-esteem is more important than money. Um, so obviously, like, I'd love to hear more about how well, you- Well, what do you, what do you that? mean by self-esteem? Like, what is exactly self-esteem? Because the, the way I always remember self-esteem mm -hmm. is that it's a, it's like therapy speak. Like people would say, you know, this feeling you feel about yourself or what is, is it like, what exactly is self-esteem in your own words? So like, for example, if your girl comes to you and says she's upset about something and your instantaneous reaction is like anger and being combative and being confrontational and argumentative, like that is all just a lack of confidence, a lack of security. I think that men do need to accept that women are emotional creatures that we thrive off the emotional connection and to keep us mentally engaged and satisfied you can't shove logic and reason down our throats yeah. you're not you're not validating our emotions when you do that so and it makes us feel like you're not taking our emotional needs seriously and we what, will hold on let's back up though what does mm -hmm. that have to do with self-esteem because it, now it's about the other person doesn't the self-esteem mean me myself me as a person yeah yes so what does it, that it, have to do with somebody else so when when you're like when you're cold like that we don't we don't want someone who it has walls up. We do. We genuinely do want someone who does wear their heart on their sleeve. And that does take a level of confidence and a, you know, and a freedom and peace in this, in this self-esteem. Like, listen, you don't need to be a Let wet napkin, question, like a Caroline. little bitch boy to portray I wanna, emotion. I just want to talk about like the heart on the sleeve for a second before we kind yeah, of absolutely. Move too far past that before we forget it. So Women will often say, we want you to share your emotions and wear your heart on your sleeve sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a line in the sand where if you are too emotional or if you share too much of your uh, softness, you're going to turn a woman off. Yeah. Like, yeah, I you don't want that. a guy to come home from work and be like, you know, Becky and HR did this and my boss did that. And, da -da -da -da, and it's like, my, my life sucks and I'm so stressed out. Like. Where does the line in the sand work for you where you want him to just get it and be able to solve certain problems on his own and you want to also hear him open up to you? Right. I mean, I will say, and this is what I touched on, you know, last week was that the kind of demise of my relationship before he shut down and shut me out, he was coming to me often in tears about not understanding his place in the world and just feeling stressed out and anxious and afraid, not understanding himself. There was things about life and him, his own self that he just didn't understand. And when he came to me with these problems, it vulnerably and emotionally and with his heart on his sleeve, it was so much more attractive to me than when he just shut down and shut me out and was angry and pissed and frustrated and hiding in his video games so he's done both though right like he's done the soft side and he's also done the closed out 
Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I, and I will say that I prefer an emotionally vulnerable man and he cried to me and I, and I liked it because not that I like to cry. But you're not with him anymore though. It's disgusting. not that I like seeing him cry. It was that it, he was being so human. It was so human of him to, and honest of him to come to me and trust in me and to, to open up about this. It was, it's what makes a good relationship. You know, no one is going to be flying high at 100% all the time. You know, we all, we all get down. We all have low points in life and you need to be able to go to that person and and talk to them about it instead of you know have the confidence have the self-esteem have the the balls to go to your woman and be like i'm sorry if i've been off i'm sorry if i've been angry i'm really dealing with some stuff and i want to talk to you about it well what we're doing i want to go to maggie after this well rich go ahead ask your question and then i was going to say but like, is that how you and your girlfriends sort of have conversations about difficulties in life? Um, I think, you know, me and my girlfriends talk about difficulties in life. It's, it's just very different when you're in a relationship, when you're in love, when you're trying to build a life with someone and try, you're trying to share the same values. You want to share the same values with someone that you want to build a life with, right? So, so that's so how you look at it this way. Let's do this thing. Like... You know, because we've got live chat watching right now. So live chat and, you know, we'll keep an eye out for it in you know, the members chat. But how has being soft and vulnerable and wearing your heart on your sleeve worked for you in current or past relationships? Just to sort of I just want to hear the feedback from the people watching. So Moff, I'll let you ask your question. We'll keep, keep an, an eye, eye on that. that. Yeah, we'll like, I'll, we'll I want to kick it over to Max here for a second. But I think but before we do that, I want to say this thing, two things, actually. One, my guess is that there's an expiration on your guy coming to you and crying and saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I am going through a lot. I don't know where the light is at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. At some point, you are going to get sick of that guy not knowing what he wants out of life and not being able to figure it out. There's a certain expiration date on somebody that can't figure it out and be competent. Women don't. They have a some patience for that, but they don't have never-ending patience forever. Right. Two, we're getting into this area of this false dichotomy where a guy is either a crying, blubbering, vulnerable mess, or he is a complete shut in video game playing angry mf -er, basically. We're not talking about what women really want, which is a guy who is not, uh, not afraid to say, hey, some stuff's going on right now, but guess what? I'm going to handle it. I'm going to take care of it. All is going to be fine. Let's move on to something else. That sweet spot right there in that middle, that's what women want. They don't want a dude that comes crying and says, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to be able to figure it out, and I need you to help me. Because right. here's the thing. like, Women and men don't live on the same planet. You'll well, never be able to experience the, the eyes. Go ahead. What was the second? What was the second portion of what I was talking about? The first thing was being open and vulnerable and all this said, uh, stuff and having self-esteem. And then the other part was, well, what do you do when you don't have self-esteem and you are in a low place? And so I talked about having faith in God and you, you all ripped me to shreds for this too, but journaling and not journaling. Like I went to the grocery store and I got food journaling. Like what is my worst feeling that I have? And why do I think I feel this way? Exercising daily, like doing all this self-development stuff, which a lot of people you know, didn't register it the way it was coming out. But, you know, it's okay to be at a low place, be honest and open and vulnerable about it. And when you are in that low pl place, what are you doing to work on yourself? So just fix it. Why can't a guy just say, I'm handling it, I'm fixing it, don't worry? Max, jump in. <laughs> Max, what is your take on men being vulnerable? Would you like, would you think um, a guy crying to you is sexy? I'm not gonna lie. I've had both. I've had the crying venti portion, and then I've had the I'm gonna handle it, but not tell. Them. And I can totally understand where Caroline's coming from because I, the one who would be like, I'm handling it. I don't want to talk to you about it. I would feel the frustration. I'm like, well, tell me, like, we're supposed to build a life together. Like, I want to know what you're struggling with, so maybe I can come up with a solution or try to help you. 
Right. So I, I can see that point where she's coming from. But for me personally, I can take a crying, the venting only to a certain extent. Right. I had a guy that would cry to me constantly and tell me like, just complain about life. I'm like, dude, like you have a job, like what are you doing to better yourself? Like do this, right. do this. And it wasn't registering for him. And something that I've come to term and realize is that men work on themselves differently than women do. Mm -hmm. For women, we like to journal, we like to read, and I've tried to push that same tools and elements to like my brothers or dudes that I've dated. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, no, I don't, what's the concept of journaling? Like, mm -hmm. what is this? And it's just something that they don't click. So they have their own way. I mean, I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure you guys do. Um, of registering what helps them to deal with what they have going on. Mm -hmm. So what about this comment over here? This guy says women don't want a vulnerable man. She wants a man to deal with her vulnerability. You can share yours, but it's all about mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say no. Yes, I want you to be able to handle me being vulnerable. But something I've also learned in past relationships is it's not always about us. It's right. a relationship is 50-50. So if you can vent to your partner about how you're feeling, then he should be able to vent to you. Again, yeah, like yeah. when we come venting to our men, we're not telling them I want you to fix this, I need you to fix this. It's just I want you to hear me out. I want to vent to you like you're my best friend. And mm -hmm. vice versa. That's what I well, also they really want a solution. They just want us like you just want us to listen to you, yeah. Yeah, just listen to me. Don't don't tell me how to fix it. Don't tell me. You know how tough that is for guys way. though, because guys are innate problem solvers. Like we want yes, to fix it. But listen to this. Listen to what you just said. You just said you wanted to try to talk to a guy to see if you can help offer a solution, and yet you don't want him to do that to you. Right. But, so I don't, if we're you're talking about two different people, mm -hmm. a man and a woman in a relationship and how they handle things is completely different. So there's no sort of what's good for me is also good for for them. It's. Right. But men ahead. also want you like I think you said this or maybe I saw this somewhere about how men want solutions. And so if you if like, women just want to talk and kind of vent and we deal with the solutions on our own and if you if we can get a man to be human again guys this is just being human like there's nothing embarrassing about this we are all humans men and women we're all going through human experiences and human emotions and but they're different but the experiences are completely different carolyn that's, that's the point that i'm trying to get across is that you will never experience life through the eyes and the lens of a man You'll I, never I, know what that's like. So how how saying, can you give advice to a man if you have no idea what it's like to be one? It, but it's not. But I'm not talking about what it's like to be a man. I'm talking about what it's like to be a human who's hurting, a human who is suffering, a human who suffers with anxiety and depression and insecurities and fear. That's a human thing. That's not a man and a woman we thing. We process that's them that's completely different. Thing. No, because yeah. men, men and women's brains, men and women's brains are completely different, and they process every single emotion differently. We don't process the emotions as men the way that women do. Men are very logical. Women are, tend to be more on the emotional spectrum. And so, what may be depression or what might be anxiety for a woman is completely different how a man views that. It's like when women say, "Like, how could you not cry at the end of Titanic? You must be <laughs> inhuman." Because they're imposing their own female perspective onto a man who doesn't have the same feelings or doesn't have the same registering of the end of a sad movie or so or of a romantic story. I'm not talking about the processing, though. I'm just talking about the general birth of a feeling. And I'm not talking about how either one of us work through it or move through it. I'm just talking about the liter the actual birth of a feeling. So if Mags and I benefit from, from journaling and being like, why do I feel so unworthy? Why do I not feel valued? Why do I not feel like I know where my my place in this world and if journaling helps us if meditating helps us if you know all this thing these things help us that's fine i'm saying that men and i because i'm not a man and i don't know what it is but men need to cultivate a list of things that will help them and and feed this self-esteem and the security and this confidence and this this happiness and this movement you need this motion. so what should be on that list in your opinion, what, what should be on that list 
someone said it in the comments, progress or regress. And I just love that. It's that's I would love I would love to hear from you guys what I'm sure you've experienced dark times and what you did to dig yourself out of those dark times and to fuel yourself your confidence and your self-esteem and to carry yourself you know, better in life. I think that's, that's what we should be telling the viewers who are suffering and struggling to be confident people and carry themselves well in this world. What can, what can we tell them to, to oh, help? Oh, oh. Yeah, I'll speak to that. So I'll speak for a minute. Cause there's, there's a lot of different things. Got a that, whole channel about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, my entire channel at entrepreneurs and Fires is basically me working through shit. Um, you know, you know, there's a t like there's a time and a place for everything for guys to work through shit. Like there was a time and a place where, you know, things aren't going well in your life. You get on your motorcycle and you go for a rip and your motorcycle is your therapist and you don't need to talk to anybody. And you just need to burn through a tank of gas and just do what it is that you got to do. Um, there's times where I've gone into a float immersion tank and isolation chamber and listened to Viking war chants for an hour. I just sat there and floated in the fucking dark. Right. Um, so journaling works too for guys you know by the way so anybody that criticizes you know the notion that journaling is useless um doesn't know how to make a concerted effort to sit down and get their thoughts out of their head and then type them out it doesn't matter if you type it out in a word doc or never note or wherever it is that you want to stash it um but writing out your thoughts is a therapeutic way of uh, downloading shit that's clogging your wusa, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, you're, I know women are all like chakra and energy crystals and stuff like that. But, you know, for guys, it's like, you got to get shit out of your head. And sometimes getting out of your head means just putting pen to paper and writing stuff. So there's any number of ways to do it. I think it's a useful practice for both men and women. Um, so yeah, you're going to get heat for doing a little bit more of the girly stuff when you're having yeah. these conversations, Caroline, which is totally fine. Because Right. You know, you're a chick and we want, you know, women to be women sort of thing. Um, but it is a useful practice. So, you know, I will say that. I really appreciate you saying that. Yeah, it's, it, I did get, and I think women will get from men the whole, you know, having spirituality and, you know, we can maybe transfer into the whole, the faith conversation as well, but um men will view a lot of the things and especially we'll just use journaling as like a, a feminine activity and practice. Um, and you're only hurting yourself, I think, uh, to the viewers, if you are labeling something that can truly help you as a feminine or like, like a wussy, like weak, like I'm not going to do that. That's for girls. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're hurting. I think you're hurting yourself. You're, you're taking opportunities away from yourself to feel better and to be better. Um, so yeah, so journaling's, journaling's great guys. Um, meditating is, meditating is great. Going on nature walks and connecting with nature is great. I'm telling you it, it works, you know, and we can, you know, I do want to clear up about some stuff about the the faith thing and you know it wasn't my intention to come and talk about christianity with a group of strangers that was like not what i had envisioned um so to anyone that thought i was uh you know discrediting christianity or i wasn't being bold in my love for for christ and and my personal religion um i do apologize for being vague on that are you a christian I went from, you know, being a yoga instructor and being very spiritual and always believing that there is a God and there is a divine creator and source of all things, like the, the mind of everything. It's, it's in everyone, every plant, every soul. From, I went from believing in, in God to then finding Christianity and, and finding um, Jesus. And I will say, and I'll give you, you know, a, 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 a deep kind of personal story, but I was journaling one night a few years ago and I was bawling. I was bawling my eyes out. So lost. And I was like, you know, God, I know you and I love you, but who is Jesus? Who, who I'd love to know who is this Jesus that everyone has Jesus saved them. 
And I felt, you're getting, you know, I'm probably going to get eaten up for this one in the comments, but I felt it got over one shoulder and then slowly I just felt the presence of Jesus come over my other shoulder. And I felt like they were each behind me with that one hand on each shoulder. And that was the first time I really felt the presence of Jesus and started to, you know, dive into Christianity. So yes, I, I do identify. How did you know? Christian how did now. you know? How did you know that feeling was God or Jesus? Oh man! And not just very, a normal feeling that you were having. It freaked me out. It it. I almost had a panic attack afterwards, and I was like, "What the hell was that?" It's and again, and that's that's what happens when you're not afraid to connect to your spirit and connect to your soul. You know, th these are the, the profound things that happen when you're not afraid to be a little bit vulnerable and, and to, to dig into a relationship with God. Man, I mean, the things that can happen in your life when you have faith in something bigger than yourself and you and you explore it and you run after it and you chase it. I, but that I didn't really answer my question, Caroline. I'm asking, I'm trying to I, figure out how you went through determining that that feeling you had was God or Jesus. And that's how you just determined that it was like, what process did you, what, what mm -hmm. process did you take to get there? Because I mean, I've had, I've had revelation experiences. I've experimented with certain forms of Eastern medicine that have been very useful in unlocking certain unconscious things that I was maybe mm -hmm. suppressing. And I saw some things, but I never thought for a second to attribute that to any sort of God or gods. I feel like, what so it's more of a personal feeling just because i'm currently on my own faith journey and actually getting closer to god um and just like caroline i was lost i didn't know anything i went to catholic school i you know was shoved down my throat i was taught all my prayers i did all that and i pulled away from because of catholic school so now at the age of 29 and reconnecting I feel like how I determined like when God's with me, if I'm getting like anxiety in the gym, I say a quick little prayer. Mm -hmm. I, it's just a different feeling than me having an epiphany or experimenting with, you know, other substances that can create that thing. Cause I've had both, I've had epiphanies where like, damn, like my life is like good. Let me change, let me do this. But nothing fully connected for me until I actually jumped into my relationship with God. It's just like a for me, it was like a warm feeling where I remember crying uncontrollably like five, six times during this process. And I'm like, okay, this isn't just me crying and letting out my emotions or whatever depression, anxiety I have going on. This is me crying because this is God telling me, like, hey, I'm here. I know you need me. And we're going to go through this together. We're going to go through what you have going on right now together. So for me, it was just a sense of security, I guess you can say. Yeah, it is like it is this feeling of because when you feel that that lost in life and a direction is when you pour your having having hope in God is, is your freedom. It is your it is your ticket to freedom. If you feel weighed down or chained down by something, pouring all of your hope into something. And again, this is you have to you are like a, a blip. You are we are all blips in the universe. Our our lives are are so short and we're meant to have profound spiritual existences and experiences. How do you know that? And what, what, what's the the opposite? Uh, how, having how, how, do you know having that? how do you know that they were meant for anything? The, the, the mere fact the mere fact we exist is is out of is out of this world. Like the our existence is 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 profound. Every everything that you you look at and you see every animal, every creature, every, every plant. I mean, the world, the God, the earth gives us everything we need to survive. Every medicine is, is in every herb and every plant uh, on the face of the planet. It is true. God gave all. us everything we needed to There's survive. And but that's getting beside the point. If, because of who I am, 
and because of the kind of person I am, I choose to believe and I don't, nobody else needs to believe that we're meant to live profound spiritual existences. That's, that's how I feel. And I right, live but like, a better, we can move on from this, but like, I'm, what I'm trying to drill down and like, I've been trying to drill down for the last 10 minutes. It's like, keep asking why. And all I get is what I keep asking I why you believe, better, why, I how live. you determine this is true. And I just get like, it's this feeling that it, it just is. And, I and also like, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I why, like, sense it upsets you. And I just want to no, be I'm able not to upset at all. I'm yeah. just trying to, I'm asking, I'm trying to get down to concrete answers because it ha every time we kind of have these conversations, I just keep getting the run around. This is all very vague. It's all it's well, faith is also a really hard thing to ex explain. I think is another thing that, you know, needs to be um, understood. It's, it's, uh, I can give you the definition of faith right now. Faith, by definition, is belief in something without sufficient evidence or without the existence of any evidence. I think we'll all pull. I'd like to pull a, a, a comment. Someone who said, because you said, what's the definition of a man of God? And and I and I couldn't really get to it. And it's this or actually someone in the comment gave me a really good answer. And he said that being a man of God is being teachable and approaches the Bible, learning the Bible with humility. And you, because we all start with just like utter error of thought and a man of God knows the, the word of God intimately. And this is wisdom. I mean, true human wisdom comes from having faith and knowing God. And then you're able to apply it to and discern and judge situations and people and, and understand enough of the prophetic components of the scripture and apply it to your own life strategy. And the value of your life and the success in your life will skyrocket exponentially when you understand that like a man of God is one who is continually becoming more dangerous and in a spiritual way, dangerous in a spiritual human way and moves with more conviction according to the word. Let me ask you a question though. Like, I think the other week you said that you wanted a man of uh, God or a certain religion. I said, well, which one? Like, you know, Islam, Judaism, Christianity. And I think you just said just a guy with religious beliefs. Right. right. And the reason I said that is because, yes, of course, I would per I would like someone who who understands who understands Jesus. But really the point is saying that i want someone who believes in their version of god because if they believe in their version of god i know that they have faith i know that they're attempting to be a, a better person and be the the best version of themselves um you know I would, and I had a, you know, I had someone in the comments kind of pull me around to be like, there's so many issues that come with marriage. Like you don't need to be battling about having different religions. And that's totally true for me personally. Yes, I'm sure because I'm going down the Christianity road that finding a Christian would be great. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to choose that though. Cause I mean, we have an entire war going on right now in the Middle East between uh, Palestine and Israel. Um, you know, a big part of that is differences in opinions when it comes to their faith. Um, you know, that's yeah. why last week I challenged you that. I'm like, why wouldn't you be able to become clear and state it's got to be a Christian? And right. just because it wasn't about, I wasn't talking about me and I wasn't trying to. I know you guys were trying to get about me and my personal life, but my point was not to talk about like what does it matter to anyone watching that I'm a Christian and would love to meet a Christian. My point is, is that having a faith. And having, and having a faith of your own choosing, having a religion of your own choosing, it is your choice. It is it, everyone watching everyone. So it can be essentially anything I want. Being a man of God just means having faith in anything. There's no, no discriminatory. No, having your own, having your, this is your decision to to discover your own faith, to discover what works for you. It's it's everyone's own journey and discovery process. What are your but thoughts I, on guys that are like, like, agnostic or atheist um i'm gonna chime in on this one just because i've had that actually happen to me sure i honestly was not a fan for me just because for someone who's barely starting into her faith um i was like i want someone that can i relate with like if i'm going through scripture or if i decide to go deeper and decide i want to go to church every sunday make this like a very like fixing in my life um 
And he was like, I am all for, you know, what you have going on with your relationship. But if this is a deal breaker, I understand. So for me personally, it's not my cup of tea. I much rather have someone who is either Catholic or Christian so we can both relate on things just because I feel like it's a little bit easier for me to manage my relationship. Like you said, there's so many things going on and different opinions where it does come to marriage or even being in a relationship. So the less for me, that I have to like argue and fight with over how he views things or how I view things, the better I think for me and this person would be. Right, but in a general sense, for all men, would you not, for all humans, would you recommend to discover a faith that resonates with them, works for them, because it creates and turns them into a more high value? Hold on, please. No, because it doesn't. No, because I I can't let you keep going, because I have to answer the question, because, again, I don't think anybody should subscribe to the notion of faith in general. I don't think it behooves anybody to believe in something without sufficient evidence. Or do you not believe in the, in the creator of the you and you? A creator? I my pa- I'm I come from my parents. So you have never born. questioned who, why any of this, why our universe, why our planet, why? Why does why, why does it matter if there's a why or not? Why is that relevant? Why does there have to be a why? But listen, then that will differentiate the kind of caliber of humans, the people who never question the meaning of life and the existence of life, and the people who do question the meaning and the existence of life. You know, in fairness to Moff, I think he has questioned a lot of things in life. Um, And, you know, he's, you know, I was baptized when I was 19, when I was 20, 21 years old. I was baptized. Yeah. But I mean, like, back to the question I was asking. So, Caroline, would you would you deal with a guy that's agnostic or atheist? Um, like, no, I wouldn't. Him? I think having faith in God and okay. and something it's really important. Yeah, so that's a but it could be any God. It could be anything, though. Yeah. As long as we're clear, it could be faith in anything you want. For me personally, I would like Christianity. But for all humans all around the world in different cultures and different uh, families and different backgrounds, I whatever faith and whatever. Uh, way that they choose to have a relationship with God, if that whatever works for them, I think that that's incredible. And so how do you reconcile uh, somebody that believes in a completely different God versus no God at all? Yeah, like, would you rather have a Muslim or would you rather have an agnostic atheist? Well, again, I would like someone who does believe in God and does recognize that there is a creator of all things. I want someone who thinks Why in a is that more- important profound way for me it mean it it means they're a more high value human for me it means that their their wisdom and their intellect and their spirituality is at a higher caliber and that's the more type of person that i personally would like to associate with okay, I, I, don't, I don't but i, I, mean, I can't i can't come off this yeah. though like i mean I, we can move on but like religion specifically tells people not to question things because it claims it has all of the answers. God did it. So there's no questioning. There's no higher learning. There's no seeking more answers. There's no more discovery to be had because the answer is we have the answer already and it's in this book. So how is somebody that's religious? There shall be no other God ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we're talking about a lot of intricacies here as I kind of get into some zones. But that's my but that's my point. It's just to, to sit here and say that someone that believes something blindly because they were either raised that way or because they read it in a book, the whole epitome of religion is to not question things. It's to not look further. It's to not go into to say, does this actually hold up today or are there inconsistencies or are there contradictions or do we know if these things actually happened and that's I, that's what i take issue with i take issue with something that says don't go exploring and don't go searching and don't go looking for answers because we already have them that's that's my issue with so i i don't i don't know how we can reconcile and say that somebody that chooses to question something and chooses to try to search for the correct answers versus just taking something that someone tells them or taking something that's written in a book that that person is lo- of lower value i have, um, I have a general question for the ladies do any of you have tattoos 
I, I have, do not. I have a few. I have uh, this is okay. number eleven, and I actually have the number word. 11, okay. I have the word faith right here. Okay. Um, you know that in the Bible it says that women aren't aren't allowed to ink their bodies. That's you're talking about the mark of the beast, and it is not referring to tattoos. That's another. Uh, thing. There's a lot of really a lot of misconceptions. So that that's brought, what's interesting is that it it can clearly state something, but then it gets reinterpreted. Sorry, reinterpreted. They get misinterpreted. No, it's 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 pretty clear. It's pretty clear. You're not allowed to ink your body as a woman. It it, it doesn't say that. It's, it talks about the the mark of the beast. It it. And that there's actually a lot of past, there's a lot of pastors, there's a lot of people who are like the so, so Christian who have tattoos to, to honor Christianity. And I don't want to get into like a kind of. Yeah, well, they also modify the. How convenient. And a lot of the sermons to say things like, uh, you know, to placate the modern toxic feminist narrative to basically say that, you know, women don't need to obey their husbands, right? Or to serve, you know, the family. Of course, listen, uh, the, again, the Bible gets very misinterpreted. I just want to go back to so it gets how, can following, well. how can following the Bible and, and following, you know, Jesus was a, a healer. He was a giver. If you're someone who wants to be religious and kind of follow um, the, the word of Jesus. And stop you here. They're like Christian. Jesus. Okay. Straight, straight from the Bible is that a uh, reference to. Leviticus 19.28, which says, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. Right. That is talking about a, a, a purity of, of, of the body, of the skin. And when you when you look back at... But again, when you look at spiritual cultures, like Native Greece Americans... Native Americans were extremely, extremely spiritual and had it a Native very. Amer what does this have to do with Native Americans? And they Native had, Americans. they had. No, no, but the question that I'm asking you is coming is, from the book. That you tattooed yourself and write from your own rule book. It says that you shall not mark your body, yet you have. But I, but I don't, but I don't hate homosexuals. There's a lot of things in the Bible. I don't agree with every single thing in the Bible. I don't, I don't, I don't hate homosexuals. I think that's fine. I think having. I thought it was the infallible fine. word of God. Is it not? It's listen. The message of the Bible is to be loving and caring and healing and generous, and to be a a person who lifts up other humans and who leads in in peace and and happiness and 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 being a, a positive who, who benefits positively other people's lives. You know, that when you, when you follow religion, you or follow Messiah or prophet, if we're using Jesus as an example, he wants you to lead people in, in love and positivity. You know, it's not getting down to these weird things of like, should you have tattoos or should well, man be important though, because it's part of the rule book. Like one yeah. of the things that the Bible calls for is for women to be chased before they get married. And, and, Women but you know how many times the Bible has been rewritten and altered, and it, it's, it's when, you get into, book, when you get it's into the book, I'm just, details, I'm just quoting your rule book. When you get, first of all, no one calls it a rule book. When you get, I call it a rule book a of, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with. That has like been I said, to help Christians follow certain steps and procedures to live a good life, and you can't pick and choose certain things out of it. Is all that's the thing, though. She just nailed but it, Rich, because this is the but thing. I do. You, but that's the point. And you know why you do that? Because you have evolved to have a secular view of what you will accept, what is right, and what you will reject, what is wrong. So but you get to take a secular evolved. worldview, and you get to pick and choose what feels good for you. You get to reject what feels bad for you based on normative normally accepted and now mainstream beliefs of what is good what is right what is morally correct and what is morally wrong who hurts who does it hurt someone to get a tattoo it doesn't hurt anyone or cause anyone pain or, or you're not killing someone you're not being disrespectful to get yeah, it right. your the problem is you're picking and choosing guys i'm just talking about when you when you put your faith into something like god you are a, a high, you are an intellectual happy okay, so high value human no, you're not. You <laughs> that, this is how i feel personally and you're more than you're more than welcome to disagree with me i just think someone who has a faith in god is carry themselves better in That's life 
and that's the see, that, that's the whole problem that I have with Christians and religion is they're always trying to convert me and be like, you know, you, I'm, you know, I'm going to pray to God to have you saved and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, but you all can't agree on a standard set of rules from your rule book. There's, you know, there's always like picking and choosing. It's like, well, if the Bible says cafeteria you, Christianity, yeah, cafeteria Christianity. It's like a la carte. And it's like, you know, like it instructs you to be chased before you get married. It instructs you not to mark your body, but you still mark your body. and You still bang guys before you get married. So it's like, how can you, you know, how can you try to recruit me to your club to join it if you don't even have a consistency in your club? Right. Like this is the like this is the issue that I always take, you know, with these uh, you know conversations when they go towards faith. It's like, I'm fine. Like, if you want to be a, a person of faith, cool, but follow your rule book. I mean, again, I got all my tattoos before I found my way to Christianity. So it's not like I got tattoos having known Christianity. You can get, or having tattoos, known you can get tattoos removed. And I would love to one removed. day when I have them, when I have the money, thousands and thousands of dollars to go through nine different lasering sessions. Maybe, yeah. maybe I will get a, 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 my tattoos removed. But again, we're kind of taking away from the bigger, the bigger message here. And that is not, and I would never push Christianity. And that's why I was vague on it last yeah, I was week. And why, a lot of Christians really like to push it on me. I would never do that. I would never do that. And that's why I didn't want to go into the deeper details when you were asking me, well, what are you? What do you want? Are you Christian? What should I be? I would never push a specific religion on one person. All I'm saying is that having faith in God is a wonderful thing. That's okay. all I'm saying. Okay, cool. So let's just move on to that. Um, can we can we do the um, what I want in a husband list? Yeah, I had that, I had that <laughs> queued up. Uh, do we want to go through the whole thing or Caroline, do you want to yeah, pick right. like, do you want to pick like a top five or do you want to go through all of them? No, we got to do the whole list. Mom. I mean, all you right, guys only right, have right. a third. I only gave you a third of the it. list. Uh, I only gave you a third. It's only a third. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How many are there? There's 26 things on this so list. There's, so there's over 60 in yeah. total. I mean, there's, like there's, there's very detailed. 75. There's it's Caroline, very detailed. It's about do think, wanting. Do you think you're going to find a guy that's going to tick off sixty items? Seventy-five boxes. No, 75. and this is you know this is kind of my way. Is you know I uh, almost like a journaling method of just having a general idea. Like you guys said, you women should have a general idea of what yeah, they yeah, want yeah. in a man. All right. Let's, this so, is kind of my way of kind of. Okay, so let's go through a third of the list then. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go through what I have, which what I sent over. So okay. we'll go this from top to bottom. And a couple of these, again, we will probably have to delve into these a little more. We'll probably ask for some definitions and some clarifications, but I'm just going to start from the top. Okay. What do I want my husband to be like? Sings in the car and loves music. Good texter slash wants to talk during the day when it's doable. Mm -hmm. Thoughtful notes, letters, flowers, surprise dates, etc. Emotionally mature and acts like an adult willing to see things from other perspectives, doesn't invalidate my experiences or feelings, doesn't think I'm arguing when I share my feelings, AKA is not defensive, mm -hmm. wants to travel and see the world, wants many babies, emotionally grounded, not to be confused with emotionally mature, isn't afraid to express themselves and tell me how they feel, in quotes you have, or in parentheses you have, isn't afraid to cry, these are two interesting back to back. We'll come back to these. Still very much a man. Okay. And then you have then you have alpha male with four exclamation points after it. Has faith or willing to explore it, wants to adventure with me, adventures in all caps, wants to experience life and new things, isn't obsessed with money, but is also secure, secure enough with it that he can provide and support. Determined, respectful, passionate, outdoorsy, vulnerable, affectionate dad, dances with me, makes everything fun, and makes me laugh. Shoo, that's only a third of them. Where do you want to start? Good. All right. Well, let's um, let's get down to brass so tacks. On, for, yeah? They're tough. Well, I, I don't know because we have to figure out what the definitions are, right? So when you say you want an alpha male, what do you mean by that? Yeah, like who's an alpha male? What's an alpha male? Give us a you know example of somebody's popular as an alpha male. I mean, I know that's like your title, um, alpha. 
alpha something unplugged alpha um yeah. and Just the book. and so i know that you guys have your your vision of what but, an yeah, but what but, but what is an alpha male? Like, can you give us an example of somebody that's popular that I you would call sorry i don't have an example but my definition of an alpha male is someone who is financially stable someone who's emotionally intelligent and mm -hmm. in your case immature um and basically i guess it's probably the wrong wording um but someone who doesn't take any shit. like they're very strong in who they are they know what they want it's more of a go get or go after that's my definition or what i link as an alpha male you're not in caroline so you agree with all that yeah absolutely when she said you're no mean, like knowing who they are of a man that's an alpha male that's popular that that we would all know i don't really follow like celebrities or pop culture um I don't know, Max, can you think of someone that they when would? When I think of alpha males, I kind of link to the gym. So the first person that probably pops in my head is probably like Seba. Like Who? that, I have a Seba. Chris Bumstead. Yeah. Chris so Bumstead, I don't know him personally, but that's like someone I would link to like them. That's like alpha male material, like, you know, X, Y, and Z. But again, that's- Because he lifts, because he's about. muscular, because he works out, because that's physically, one of the, I don't know if you guys that's caught what, this, because no one on this list- Nowhere on this list doesn't say anything about physicality, not height, not muscularity, not being in shape. No, that's what I'm, I'm pointing that out. So well, does, the, does that not? Said. Let's go back to what she said about when she thinks of an alpha male, she thinks of someone who's really sure of themselves. Well, what does that mean? That means someone with confidence. What does that mean? Someone with self-esteem, someone who is so sure of themselves and, and their path and who, who they are in this world that they don't need to tear down other people, tear down the person that they're dating. They carry themselves in a really sure of themselves manner. You know? So, so guys chasing excellence knows his purpose is on okay, his mission. So, okay, so today we drove to the top of Mount Mitchell in North Carolina, the highest peak east of the Mississippi. We're coming down the road. And there's this fruitcake walking down the middle of the road, hippie dude with uh, weird hair and shit in it and rat's nests and, you know, clothes falling off him. And he was so sure of himself. He was so confident in himself that he was going to report us to the police for driving down the road in a fashion that we felt comfortable and safe with, that he was going to videotape us, snap uh, photographs of our plates and us and have us report. He was very sure of himself, very confident man. Broke I, his foot, that though, though. I actually see that as like secure. I think someone who wants to cause problems unnecessarily for other people, like trolls in the comments, it's like this kind of thing. It's like yeah. you are not benefiting, you're not doing anything out of the kindness of your heart, the goodness of your heart, you're not doing anything positive, you're not benefiting anyone positively being a tattletale. That's not but in his mind, he might think he is. In his mind, he might think he's making the road safer and that he's doing a service to the public. I mean, he's very sure of himself and his opinion that he's doing the right thing. I mean, there's there's people out there who will call the cops because you're parked in their parking spot. I mean, there's people out there who will call the cops on you. There, there's a notion. Right, but the, I, think, ahead, I think Mike said it. She said something like, uh, doesn't take any shit. Yeah? Was that you, Mike? That's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. So... So that's always interesting because I mean, like, you know, the notion of a strong, virtuous alpha male, you know, is, uh, <laughs> uh, the notion of a strong, virtuous alpha male, still very much a man, an alpha male, strong, you know, uh, doesn't take a lot of shit. But then you want them to be soft as well. Like women want a tender protector. Like, I think we know this, right? Like they want a guy that can make it rain, solve problems, make shit happen. But they also want the tenderness side, right? Mm -hmm. You want the emotion. You want the softness, yeah? Definitely. But those two things rarely exist in leaders. Like, they, they rarely exist in know. men that would be classified as an alpha male, right? To have that soft notion, uh, you know, ingrained to them where they're going to maybe cry on your shoulders or express themselves if their day's not going so well. But, they you know, they can also put a dent in the universe. Like they're doing something of some significance with their life. They're having an impact on it. Like the way that 
Like I think one of the best definitions that I've heard of of what an alpha male is is it's a man that other men want to be and other women want to be with, right? He's recognized, and his perception and his aura and his energy sort of leads as he walks into a room, right? It's like you know you just know that this guy's made of something, right? Totally. And it's always an interest, you know, like an interesting notion. You ask a hundred people what an alpha male is, and you get a hundred different answers, and then like the variation of those answers sort of change depending on how far you want to drill down it, right? But a lot of the stuff that you've got in this list over here, you know, which we talked about early on, is there are some contradictions. There's some pretty strong con contradictions in your list because you're asking for one thing um, in a man which you're going to value, but these type of men rarely come with these other things, you know, that you list, right? And this is only a third or a quarter of your list, I think you said? It's half, it's half of the list. It's, it's, okay, I'd say okay. now we're going to have two, I can read a few more from the second half of the list. Sure. Yeah, please. Like, um, what do I want? Do you have a list, uh, Max? I actually don't have a list. I okay. have, um, I actually never really drilled down into that. I just have what I want. And to be honest, it's very similar to a certain ex, but it was more his how he carried himself, how he was. And granted, he wasn't really vulnerable. And I was like, okay, like if I want someone this way, I have to learn he's not gonna be the vulnerable person that I may want. If I want him to be assertive and carry himself in a high state manner and just be that person, then I'm gonna have to realize that he's not gonna have the emotions that I may want from him. Okay. And I've learned that's okay and I've accepted it. Well, I think there needs to be a there. There can be, and I mean, honestly, the and to go back to the list, the rest of this li list is like clean, yeah, organized, right. good, good style, clean and organized, a movie lover, fitness focus. It's you know, it's it's kind of mundane stuff. It's it's nothing crazy. Um, but again, that that balance between wanting to be assertive and um, and manly, with also being not being afraid to express emotions like you guys read from what I uh, would like in a man and, and a husband, you can be assertive and manly and also be um, soft and, and vulnerable and not afraid to express emotions. And actually I have found that I find being confident enough to express emotions actually serves your your manliness in a, in a little bit because it, it it allows you to work from a lot of different angles and not be kind of one note like a one note boyfriend um to be able to find we're trying to go ahead rich yeah so one of them on the list is doesn't invalidate my experiences and feelings so mm -hmm. you express experiences and feelings how would a guy invalidate them um i mean in in the past, not not this most recent relationship, I'd say, um, I don't know, maybe four, four or five years ago, um, he was just like a workaholic. Um, and it was hard to have an emotional connection with him. And I would try to address that. And I found myself to be invalidated. This is a long time ago, so it's hard for me to kind of dig up specific details. But, you know, there was just me not feeling an emotional connection the way I'd like to. And then, you know, being discredited in some way or another. Was it like a, a concern raised around, hey, you're working too much. I'd like to spend more time with you. Like, why do you have to work so much sort of stuff? Or kind of like, you know, we'd only spend like one or two nights a week together. I'm kind of someone, you know, I'd like to like, Oh, Caroline, come on. You know, I'm, I'm busy here. You're looking like I'm working. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of just, yeah. You shut it down. I think. Yeah. But I mean, you're going to get that with a guy that's on a purpose though, right? Like, I don't know how he would have expressed it to you specifically, but a guy that's, that's, I mean, I can tell you when I was starting up my debt relief business in 2003, like for, for the, for the first three, four years, it was like, I, I had time for nothing. I had time for nobody's pain, tears, emotions. It's like, I'm hyper-focused and I'm on a mission and I got to get this off the ground. I have something to prove. Mm -hmm. And people in my life that were okay with that stuck around and people that weren't, they didn't, you know, which is fine too. But that's, but that is a character, like, you know, it's funny because that is a, 
at this conference once and my old business coach was speaking and he said, um, and just about everybody in the room is an entrepreneur, right? So these are all guys really qualified to be in the room. You had to be the founder of a business making several million dollars a year in sales receipts. And then he had it like the entire room is about 100, 150 people in the room, something like that. And it was like, you know, do you have all of these um, you know, descriptive traits, which would lead to, I don't know, things like manic uh, personality, you know, certain types of personality disorders, whether it's mild or severe, everybody in the room that is doing something with their life and in their business is basically the kind of character that, that would just be like, you know what, Caroline, I get that you want to spend more time. Like, I get that you think that maybe I'm too focused on money or I'm too focused on this, but it's like, that's just me. And that's what I'm going to do. Right. And you'd have to like, if you want a guy to provide, if you got want a guy to lead, if you want a guy that's an alpha male, if you guys, you know, want a guy that is impressionable and other people look up to him and women look at him with a warm eye, with you know, a twinkle in their eye, you're going to have to make concessions. I think that's the point that we're trying to make here is that, you know, there, there's, we see a lot of gals on the show that will have a list of prerequisites, like even demands, you know, sort of thing. And they're never short. It's never, it's never less than 10. It's always a very long laundry list. In some cases, it's over 100. And they'll spend their 20s and 30s holding out for that guy. And they never get him. And they either go down one or two paths, they either go down the path of never finding the guy. And they end up collecting cats or dogs as pets. And they become like a fur baby mama or something like that. Or they end up settling for a less than desirable guy than what they would have had five or 10 years ago. Right. So a guy that's of a lower caliber, but it's like the baby rabies is on. They want to have the baby. You know, their friends are having babies. And it's like they just find a guy with good enough genes that's just there that comes home and has enough money to pay some bills. And it's like both of those paths never really lead to happiness because if they settle for a guy, they end up getting divorced because they get bored or upset or unhappy with them and they need their space that they can't breathe or they're unhappy being like fake moms, like, you know, fur baby moms, you know, sort of thing. So I think what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, with a long laundry list of requirements for a guy, you're on a balance of probability setting you up for a high degree of failure when it comes to attracting and retaining that guy, because it's such a, because it's such a long demand list. I mean, listen, half, more than half of those things on that list are things like liking music, wanting to travel, like really, like really, really insignificant things. Yeah. Pro profoundly, but I don't, like what majorly would I, would I look for in the guy? And again, I know this talk about faith really bothers you guys. Me personally, a Christian would be great. I think for, for people to, to look for someone who, someone who does have faith is a really great thing to look for. I think someone looking for someone who is an, able to have an emotional connection, connection and is able to, I mean, think about it. What woman doesn't want to experience romance and playfulness and have that emotional connection with their man? And you can still have that while also, you know, remaining um, manly and driven uh, and, you know, all those other things you There's were talking very about. Few can't. Emotional can't. men that are also manly and driven. I'm sorry, you kind of overlapped each other. There's, there's, there's very, very few guys that are that are driven alpha males that are also soft and emotional. They like those characteristics rarely exist in the same person. They're at direct odds with one another. It's it's like it's not a switch that you can just flip on and off. It, it, women have this thing too where they say, "Oh, well, I'm a boss babe at work, and I you know wear the pantsuit, and I'm the high powered lawyer or the banker or whatever." But when I come home, I completely melt into my man's arms, and I'm super feminine, and it's just not the case. Like that stuff stays with you. You know, if you're a man who's a leader and you're dominant and you know what you want and you're a go getter, you're going to be that pretty much all the time. It's not a character that these guys play. And it's like, I look at this list and there are guys that will listen to you about the problems. There's guys that will cry on your shoulder and be vulnerable that believe in Jesus and that have aspirations for a better life. Those dudes exist by the millions. And guess what? They're invisible to you. Yeah, women never 
they are not the guy that is going out in trying. Like, and, and here's the thing too: a lot of women don't understand, and this is through no fault of their own. They don't understand what it really takes for a guy to make something of himself. If a guy can't make something of himself, there's no safety net. There's no government bailouts. There's no programs. There are very few shelters or very few programs or things and infrastructure that are put in place for the struggling man. Nobody cares about a man's problems. You, on the other hand, like you most likely will never be homeless. You'll most likely be able to be taken in by a man. If you lost everything tomorrow, somebody would be able to house you and feed you and clothe you and take you in and support you. There's some guy out there that would for your average man who's homeless or that is down on his luck. There's not a woman that's even going to look his way. And so this idea that a guy can be hyper, hyper successful and at the same time, hyper, hyper emotional or in, in exhibit all of these additional traits, they're just paradoxical to one another. They just don't exist. They're in direct odds. So you can have the emotional guys you want all day. You can have the vulnerable guys that are going to sing with you in the car and that can travel and are like, oh, yeah, like I definitely want more out of life. But to most guys wanting more out of life, is another 10K promotion per year at his desk office email job that he might be able to afford. And that he might be able to afford, you know, a family vacation once a year and have, you know, a car payment that's 600, 700, whatever I'm trying to get at is that this list that you've given is most of it is describing a painfully average man with the exception of, you know, be a man and be alpha. Well, like we're trying to say, these alpha guys, these guys that are leaders, these guys that are out doing these dents in universe and are trying to really give, make a name for themselves and create a life, that's how they're going to be at any particular situation or any particular interaction. Can we um, give it to Max? Because I noticed she made some very Max. uncomfortable faces when you were talking there. I was just agreeing with pretty much kind of half of what he was saying because I experienced it and they're completely two different people. So that's why I said I've learned that the guy I want is going to probably work way more than spend time with me. But at least when we do spend time, he's probably going to make the best of those moments. Mm -hmm. And vice versa to what you were saying, um, Rich, was that when you were going like doing your thing and you were hyper focused, that's all you had time for. Right. Currently, me as myself as a woman, I am hyper focused on just focusing on me. So I don't have time to date, nor do I want to date because it's like I don't have the emotions to pour into someone right now. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like okay, when it happens, it happens, but I'm not focusing on that part just because like I don't have the energy, nor the focus, nor the need to go that way. If I'm working, I'm working from this time to this time. I'm coming home, going to sleep, going to the gym. Like, that's all I have time for in my orbit. And some people understand it. As you said, Rich, like, my family sometimes doesn't even understand it. Um, so I can't only imagine bringing a partner into something like that because either if they involve their life very similar to mine, then yes, they'll understand it. But if they don't, which has happened, it caused conflict where they're like, you don't have time for me. And I'm like, well, this is what I work. This is the time I have. Like, you can either, I can either, you can work with me and I work with you, or we just, it just not gonna, it's just not going to work between us. What does it mean when you say a partner? Um, for me, a partner, I am saying someone that I can build a life with, um, financially come and meet at the same table. It's not, I think I'm gonna get contradicted for this or like get a loss over this. Little it's, match? Huh? What do you do for a living? Um, currently, I am actually not working. I it's a very sensitive subject. So I kind of don't want to say. Okay, but you want a guy that's a financial equal to you. But what you're saying is you want a guy that's got his shit sorted that you can you can enter his life, right? Like you can mm. go along for the ride. Yeah. Not necessarily. Isn't it, isn't it okay for a gal to go along for a ride? Like if she finds a, a, 
like a good guy that's got his life squared away and he's got his money and he's got his network and he's got things going like do you really like, need to compete with him i feel like i don't know that part is where i go back and forth on for me personally just because i'm like do i want to just have someone have their shit together and just be able to take care of me or do i want to have something that i can fall back on my own I'm curious why why you have to sacrifice uh, one thing for the other. My dad, for example, came over on the boat from Italy, had, like no money, started a restaurant, very driven man, and then started his own construction business. But his love for my mom and their relationship and their connection is really wonderful and there's there's quite a there's a great balance so i i know that it's possible to be driven and successful but also be able to come home and kind of maintain and um sustain and fuel an emotional con connection with the person you're in a relationship with uh, there is a balance because i see it firsthand from my parents um, mm -hmm. But I also know my dad is working, and if he's gonna go for that overtime, he's gonna take it. Mm. Regardless if he goes in from whatever time he goes in to whatever time he gets out, he's gonna take it. And he's like, "Well, I need to do this. I need to. I need to provide. I need to do this." So okay. there, there is both. But I also, like I said, I also know for those for what I want, they're gonna choose, or they will provide and be more like work more. Enough. Right. And it's totally cool to take that over time and take those extra shifts and be that, you know, I think, you know, that that work and that work mindset and then maybe have make a extra special plan for the weekend because you did work so much during the week and there was a lack of connection going on during the week. So consciously in your in your mind as a good uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband or wife, you say, oh, OK, let's do something special together this weekend to kind of reconnect since we didn't get the chance to this week. Well, no, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's no, I'm just going through your head, man. I have no idea what we're even talking yeah. about. <laughs> I'm completely I'm off. The, I, I heard, but what I heard was it's like, Caroline, you're coming from this place of my parents did it, therefore that's what I want and I know it's possible. And Rich nor I tonight have said anything about it not being possible. What we're trying to say is, just because something's possible doesn't mean it's probable. It's possible that if I go play a scratchy lottery, I'll become a billionaire, but the probability is pretty low. Why not give a more attention and time to things that are better ROI and a better probability of happening and just understanding that you're better off kind of choosing one. I mean, we, we run into this a lot with women that come on the show where they're sort of holding out for this fairy tale once in a lifetime disney movie ending of a relationship and they're just going to kind of stumble into this amazing guy that's got 75 boxes checked off and they're going to live happily ever after and for the vast majority of people a vast, vast majority of women that isn't the reality because for one you know there's not just this pool of high value high class men that have it all together that are out there that are just hiding something it's not like this just mythical group of guys that you have to kind of go find. You know, what you're seeing is primarily what you're getting. So, again, like if people don't want to settle, they want to do this whole thing, like I know what I'm, what I'm worth or I've seen it work, I've seen it be possible, and that's what I want to hold out for, like, okay, no one's saying that's not a possibility. But what we're trying to get across is that we, Rich and I, spend a ton of time with guys that are high-level entrepreneurs. We spend a lot of time with guys in our own community that have the drive and that have these high-level aspirations. And a lot of them have really great, solid relationships. But they're not great and solid relationships because they, they have this 
emotional vulnerability and they have this feelings time that they have to share with their girls or their wives every night, it's because they're competent leaders and they move the needle forward and their women overwhelmingly trust them to do the right things and they have a successful relationship because of it. Like guys that are worried about making the next dollar and securing the next project are not carving out time to say, let me make sure that I go be home and be vulnerable with my lady or my chick or my wife. And I'll even say this, like, cause I told her I would say this on the show. Like I read that list to my own lady earlier and I told Rich this before the show, but I, I didn't have it. I just asked what her opinion was. And she said, it sounds like Caroline wants to date a woman that's trapped in a man's body. Let me ask the girls this question. Um, we've talked a lot about what you're looking for. Um, what do you think the guy that you want is looking for? I feel like a guy, what they're looking for is in a woman is the, what is it, the nurturer, someone who is obviously intelligent. Um, I would expect if I want someone to be financially free, I would expect they would want the same for themselves. Um, I lost it my care thought. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll go off that. I think having uh, wisdom and intellect is so attractive. I think, um, you know, like I said, having faith and that spiritual right, so is really is important. The guy that you want wants in you. So what you need to offer him, basically. So the first thing you said was wisdom. And intelligence yeah let me yeah just let me get let me get let me get my let me get through my train of thought yeah i think having, having intellect and, and wisdom is really attractive and again having that kind of uh, faith and spirituality is really attractive too and they actually go hand in hand um i don't i think saying that i'm 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 looking for feminine qualities in a man is slightly far-fetched um only because what what I'm really looking for is someone who's just not afraid to be human and someone who's not afraid to um, be better and to search for more high quality. Well, I'm stop for a second, because I was asking you what the guy is looking for in you and you've gone and turned it right back around to what you're looking for in a guy. So I want to keep it just on the guy that you're attracted to. What do you think he's looking for or what he needs in a woman? Well, if the guy, if the one that I'm looking for, uh, so we got, so we got wisdom. Things, hope, I would hope that what they would be looking for the same things in me that I'm looking for in them. So also looking for a level of intellect and spirituality and looking for someone who's not afraid to progress rather than regress. Someone who isn't afraid to, um, do things to, to better themselves. And, you know, that's, if if I'm looking for those, how is that, how is that useful to a that, man's life if if he's already those things? Sorry, I didn't hear the first. Part. How is that useful to a man's life if he's already those things? Like, well, do you I think as someone gets perfect. perfection? Do you think perfection is a, is attained and then? No, no. Doesn't it have um, to you know what I'm getting at is that um, if I have certain skills and I'm looking for. A woman, even a business partner, you know, for example, um, I don't want them to have the same skills that I have. I want them to have complementary skills, right? Right. Like if I have masculine traits and I can do blue jobs, I want a, a woman that can do pink jobs, right? I'll take care of getting the snow tires and swapping them out for the summer tires in the car. You fix dinner, and I want a sandwich too while I'm doing this sort of thing. Like we, like we have complementary roles, but what you're describing is. Here's my descriptive list in in me, which I also want in a man, and, and that man is also going to want that in me, sort of thing. But that that doesn't really like. There's no real guy out there that's that's like um, on a dating app going, oh, she looks like she has some awesome wisdom on her. Like a guy's never looked at a woman walking away in yoga pants and being like, oh yeah, look at the wisdom on her. Well, I hope that you get into the depths of a relationship. No, that's that's question, what, what is he looking at? when it comes to a woman, he's looking at her femininity, her beauty, yeah? 
that's yeah, that's that's physicality, which is so important, and chemistry is so important, and physicality is so important. But I think once you start to peel back the layers and you get to know someone, for me personally, and again, none of you have to agree with me, but for me personally, I just want to be with someone, and I want someone who wants in me to be yeah, able to have talking about that someone that you want. What do you offer? What is it that you're able to bring to his life? I want us both to want to have deep and intellectual conversations. I want us both to be have emotional depth to us. I want us both to want to chase things like like faith and spirituality. Maybe we'll read the same book and then talk about it. Maybe maybe we'll go on a maybe we'll go on a hike and listen to the same podcast and then talk about it on the way home. You know, I I want to have this just intellectual and emotional evolution that I share in um with my partner, with my sorry, significant other. You know, I, I just want to evolve with the person that I love and I want them to want the same with me. Okay, so let me ask this question. So it's been said that there's really three things that women have to do to keep a guy and to attract a guy. Oh, I know them. Cook well, um, ha have sex and keep the household. Yeah. Where'd you hear that? Uh, and I'm pretty sure I... You got one right. You got the You got the sex part right, but it's actually... Do the nastiest, dirtiest things in the bedroom that you've never done with any other guy or ever would. You'll only do it. Enthusiastically. You said bangs me enthusiastically. I remember now. Yeah. The, <laughs> the other two, which we may have talked about during the last show, were be useful to his life. So be a compliment to his life. Right. And then the other thing was never disrespect him. Right. Which is and really important to men. Never disrespect them. But women will routinely disrespect a, a man. See, one of the reasons why I see guys um dive into things like uh, video games you know for example mm -hmm. is because they can escape and they can mm -hmm. go into that world and they can play video games they can be a weapon in that space and dominate all the other 12 year old kids while they're you know playing sort of thing but in their own world if 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 they're not in a good relationship and they've been disrespected they can get the respect that they're looking somewhere else by immersing and sort of escaping in those areas district like disrespect to men is incredibly annoying and demeaning and frustrating. It's one of the things that men will often say when they're like, I'm out. That's it, I'm out. Like, like this chick does not respect me. But what if they're... I haven't heard any of the gals tonight say, you know, I would like to be a compliment to his life. I would like, you know, like, you know to do these important things that matter to men. Because that was I a like question that. on, where it was like, yeah. what is it that the guy that, that you want to be with is looking for in a woman? And I heard things like wisdom. And it's like, I don't... I mean, if I want wisdom, then I'll sit down at a table at a board of directors and I'll and I'll chop it up with them, right? I like, I want, I want peace. I want femininity. I want a place of uh, solace and refuge, you know, with a woman, sort of thing. That's how most guys think, you know, when it comes to stuff like that. They don't want chaos. They don't want disrespect. You know, they don't want to compete. And I think I, I, what everything you just said. I think when you evolve side by side with someone, you can attain all these all those things and and share in in all of those things right, and but I mean, you can't lead a guy though no that's not what i'm saying and i would love for a, a man to lead me in my emotional evolution and my um you know kind of development to, into, man to let him do that to if it, would I let someone do that? Absolutely. If they had what it takes to lead me and to guide me into doing things that make me a better human. I mean, that is what I'm here to talk about, that I think that men and women should be together and in their relationship, aside from their work life, aside from everything else, I think that there should be this symbiotic relationship of both parties trying to be the best version of themselves and also helping each other attain that. So what is, so what's the definition of symbiotic? Symbiotic, a, a flow, a rhythm, a rhythm and it, in, it, in harmony. Yeah. 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 So there are differences between the two components then. Yes. So but they, you don't they, really need wisdom in her and wisdom in him. You don't need the cap capability to do Z and she needs capability to do Z as well, right? Like different proportions, I would say. Yeah, like what I'm trying to establish is that for a good relationship to, to work, generally speaking, is there like there ha like there's only one steering wheel in a car for the driver and there's a passenger mm -hmm. seat. And there's gotta be somebody in the driver's seat and there's gotta be somebody in the passenger seat. And women don't 
generally want to be in the driver's seat. And if they find themselves in the driver's seat, they're generally not happy in the driver's seat. They want to be led by a giant, mm. right? So, mm. the, like, what I'm encouraging you to sort of contemplate at you know at this point is like divide the the similarities which you're sort of stacking, which it's like wisdom, wisdom, uh, you know, faith, faith, uh, you know, explore this, explore that. So it's like be okay with being a gal and be okay with a guy being a guy, be okay with a guy being on a purpose and maybe putting in more hours than what you're willing to put in, which is totally fine. I, I mean, like that's the whole base of the whole, um, what the toxic feminists call it, the, uh, the gender pay gap, you know, like they, you know, they often say, oh, there's this gender pay gap where women get paid 75 cents on the dollar for every dollar a man makes. And, you know, it's the stupidest argument in the world because if corporations could pay 75 cents on the dollar to get a task done, they would just hire women. But what it boils down to is women generally work lower paying jobs that are lower risk with shorter hours with, with, with less travel distance. Uh, so they're generally compensated lower than what men are. I know female lawyers that get paid exactly the same as male lawyers. I know female accounts that get paid exactly the same as male accounts. But that's where you get those differences, right? Which is totally fine. And I'm just encouraging, you know, you gals and any other you know, women watching this is like, it's okay for men and women to be different. It's okay for men and women to compliment their life. Like, look, if there's a bang in the night and some shit's going on downstairs, I'm getting out of bed, I'm grabbing the fucking hatchet under my bed and I'm gonna yes. put it in the guy's face. I'm not expecting you to get out of bed and go and handle that. But if I'm hungry, when I'm doing something, I want a sandwich, right? So conform to what works for you and conform to let him doing what works for him. And there's going to be differences, right? Like you're not going to get 75 boxes ticked off. It's just, it's just yeah. never going to happen. If you, hope, you know, if you hope for it, it's generally a path to misery and disappointment and collecting more than the one dog that you have right now walking around. Well, I think that's perfect. And I think that a lot of women do. I know I want to uphold the role of, I love to cook. I love to cook. I love to to clean and maintain a household. And I love to do all those. That's what I'm talk. saying though. Because I mean, like, a lot of the stuff that you talked about is like, I'm looking for all of these similarities. But listen, there's see, there's roles like what I just said, like those are women roles. And what you said on bang in the night, the man like there are men and, and women roles. Uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you anymore. But then there are shared human goals. Like the things I said, uh, you know, things to chase after about, you know, just uh, evolving um, as a human in, in different areas of life. And I think those can be done together and it's actually a way to you know bond and connect and to become stronger in the relationship mm -hmm. you know we should you know we should not be afraid to evolve to together as well have our separate roles and kind of duties and goals and visions but then there are things that we can share in whether it's you know faith or all these other things there's way for for ways for us to connect and again, evolve together. And I think that that's a beautiful thing to have in a relationship. Love, well, do you want to wind her down? <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah, I guess it's about that. It's about you guys have any questions you know, before we wind it down? Or Yeah, please, fire away. I think I might have written some things for questions for you, for you guys. Um, Max, do you have anything? actually don't and again it's my fault i was not prepared i know it's so hard dude it's so hard it's and i you know i have things that i wanted to talk about and i was like oh i just want to spread i just want to spread the message of positivity and like loving god and knowing god and being the best version of yourself and then it never comes out the way you want it to nobody uh, n barely anyone is gonna understand what you're really trying to say but I mean, the fact that you showed up and I showed up again to try and clarify, you know, what I was saying. And, you know, the the guys are good at, you know, digging into the uncomfortable stuff and kind of breaking us out of our ways of thinking, which I think is great. I think these conversations are great. My main message was just that 
uh, you know, the human, hum, evolving as a human and emotionally and in a relationship, it can be a really beautiful thing. And focusing on mental health and self-esteem and all these things are really, really awesome. And hopefully I was able to at least clarify some of the things. I know probably not 100%, but, you know, I did the best that I could. And credit to you, Mags, for coming here and talking a little bit, even if you weren't prepared. Um, I do, I think I wanted to ask the men. I wanted to talk about stay at home moms, but I kind of touched on that because I think that it's great to be a stay at home mom and kind of take on the roles of like cooking and cleaning and doing all that stuff. I personally love that. Um, and I'm, I, I, what do you guys think about stay at home moms? I'm curious about that. Well, I mean, if you're going to have kids, I think it's ideal to have them at home with somebody that shares your values and is going to raise them in a way that you agree with raising them. I don't think public school systems are a good idea and I would probably homeschool. So that would be part of the, I would love to homeschool my kids. I love that. But, but, you know, it's a big, but, but, um, she would, she would, she would need to be willing to surrender to the frame of the man. Because mm -hmm. if he's going to go out and bring home the bacon, she's got to be able to cook it up. Mm -hmm. And he's got to be the leader in the relationship. There can't be any combativeness or conflicts mm -hmm. uh, or competitiveness in the household. Um, I think a man needs to protect a woman um, and let her do women things, you know, from time to time, obviously, you know, the girly things. But it's very, very difficult in today's world because even if you have that, I mean, I see, I see guys all the time. Like I know a guy that's got six kids. He's Mormon and his wife's pregnant with his seventh kid. They're both very religious. They're both Mormon mm -hmm. and she's divorcing him, pregnant with the seventh kid. She was a stay at home mom and, you know, she did it for all those years. And then she said one day, you know what? Oops. I changed my mind. I want to go off in this direction over here and I don't want to be on your purpose. I don't want to cook up the bacon when you bring it home. And he was, he's a good guy. He's a good man. He's also good at being a man. He's a good provider. He's a good father. Can uh, I ask you a question? Do you think it's a possibility that maybe she didn't feel that emotional connection that she needed to with him? Do you well, think that was lacking maybe? I mean, seven, it's seven kids. I mean, what else needs I'm to not, be said? I'm not surprised that, that that's a question that's being asked, but it's like, the problem is, is that if you keep a woman home to raise your kids in a country where the family law system hates men, you're going to get fucked when she wants to untie the knot and very badly. So do I like the idea of a stay at home mom raising my kids? Yeah, but I'm past that stage now. Right. But it's like guys can do that. But just understand that you are sitting on a potential ticking time bomb that can go off and completely change the trajectory of your life. You're gonna see your kids a lot less. You're gonna see your wealth being robbed from you going to hurt. So there is a risk factor. I think in an ideal world, if the government wasn't involved in our lives, that would be the way to go, absolutely. And that's the way that it was for thousands of years, you know, generally speaking. But now that we've got the government in our lives and family law in our lives and men are no longer the head of the household. See, the problem is that men no longer have authority with responsibility. Like if you're gonna have a stay at home mom, You've got responsibility, but you should also have authority because if you have responsibility without authority, then that's slavery. And that's the world that we live in today. Men are no longer the head of the household. The government is. And if women change their mind about their their view in that relationship and, and they're placing it even, they can all they got to do is file a false DV charge and he's fucked. And she has all the power in her court. So I know it's a long answer to your question. Um, Moth probably has, you know, some thoughts on it too, but um, it, it's ideal, yes, but it's difficult to manage because there's so many, there's so many pieces to this puzzle. Mm -hmm. No, I co-sign. I mean, my big thing is if you're going to raise kids, uh, don't let a stranger do it. It should be the mm -hmm. woman that births them. Yeah, you've got to find a way to continue doing what you need to do to be a provider at home, but. Um, 
find a woman that wants to do that. Find a woman that doesn't think that staying home with the kids is a sacrifice and that she's giving something up and that she envisions that this is what she ultimately has always wanted to do or she's that's something she sees for herself. Uh, don't invite the state into your life. Don't let the government tell you what you're allowed to do with your personal relationships with your woman or your children, um, if at all possible. So, yeah, like, I, mean, I, I stand behind what you said. Like, what happens if you find a guy that subscribes to this notion that we just had a conversation? Um, where do you live? In what state? Connecticut. Okay, Random. So, so let's say that you meet a guy in you know Connecticut. And he's like, okay, you know what? I'll do the stay-at-home mom thing. I'll bring home the bacon. You know, you cook it up. You raise the kids. We'll homeschool. But I want to move to a state that's uh, friendlier. So let's go to Florida. Would you pick up, move your shit down to Florida, and follow him? I would follow someone to a safe, a, a safe state, a, a, a state that I thought was safe and a well-rounded place to raise kids. Okay, it, so I mean, like the way that state law works right now is you either have balance where it treats both parents pretty much equally, which is like Florida or uh, I think Kentucky and Michigan is another one. Um, or you have states that hate fathers, which are the vast majority of them right now, which give women a lot of power in marriage and a divorce. So like there could be guys that, that come along and be like, you know, they watch the show, for example, and DM you and say, hey, Carolyn, you know, I dig your vibe. You know, here's my, da -da, let's, I live in Connecticut, you know, let's get together sort of thing. But roll down the road a few years later, it's like, you know what? We got to move to uh, Florida if we're going to do this. You know, I just want to make sure we got a nice, secure place, you know, where we do this sort of thing. You'd have to be okay to go along for the ride with a guy like that. He might bring a lot of the boxes that you like, you know, you, know, you want to tick off. Mm -hmm. But would you be willing to follow that guy, right? Like, would you be willing to, to uh, let him lead you to wherever that happens to be? Because right. that's, that's a ride or die check, right? Like, that's a, like that's a guy that... Uh, you know, that's a guy that's really going to value that relationship. Right. And it would kill me to leave my family. But if my husband, who I adored and who adored me, and we had this just great relationship filled with all these things that I've been talking about, if he got a stellar job in another country, I would go. And it would, it would hurt me to leave my family. But if he had... You wouldn't be leaving them. You're 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 creating your own family, and you have the capacity to see them whenever you want. I mean, right, you know right. I mean? exactly. To you know, not as frequently. I couldn't call my mom. Hey, can you come babysit so we can so we can go out to dinner? But you know, you know, it it would be a little tough, but I would do it for um, the right man. And you know, I I know that we've grappled back and forth, kind of about what faith means and about a lot of stuff. But I hope that you know, at the end of the conversation, we can all agree that we do need to kind of fuel and maintain the emotional connections that we have with our significant others to sustain it and to, to keep each other. You know, it is, it's not all about the, the career and the work, but it is about, um, you know, loving each other correctly and showing up correctly and, and evolving uh, together as a, a team. Well, I hope that answers the question then. Cool. All right. Moff, want to wrap her up? Yeah, I don't have any um, particular unsolicited advice. I have just um, some overall bullet points, I think, that kind of wraps up a lot of things we were talking about tonight. Um, be intentional about what you want in a man, but also be realistic. The kind of guy that you want to go after probably doesn't need your help on becoming a man or doing more manly things. Honestly, if going into a relationship and thinking that this guy, you know, you want to help him evolve or grow and be better, you're probably inadvertently going to do some things that are either going to change him, which you aren't going to like, or if he's able to kind of say, no, I don't need you to do those things you may end up unfulfilled or he may just get essentially annoyed about it. He doesn't want to be with a woman that's constantly trying to change him and try to see things from her lens. The guy that you're going to kind of go after is a guy that's already worth his salt. You don't want to go into a guy into a relationship that's a project because there's millions of those guys that are out there that will be projects for you, but they're invisible to you. So you don't see them. You don't talk to them. You don't match with them on dating apps. You don't take them seriously. You don't give them the time of day. 
dating, especially for women, you're already on borrowed time. There is not this magical sea and group of men that are just going to knock on your door one day. They're not hiding from you. There, there is a shortage of high caliber men that are out there and you're going to have to kind of decide what you're willing to sacrifice and essentially what you're not. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about what, stop projecting what you see and want in a guy and assuming he sees and wants those same things in you. Men and women are inherently different. We want different things from one another. The biggest problem that I think women are experiencing today is for whatever reason, they stop selling what men are buying. Men have always bought femininity, beauty, peace, reprieve, pleasantness, and respect. And for whatever reason, women now think that they need to sell intelligence, wisdom, hard work, advice, you know, pushing somebody to do these things. The kind of guy that you're going to want and go after is already going to be a guy that's already settled and is going to be a guy that's already doing those things. Yeah. The biggest advice is find a guy that's on that path get the hell out of the way and figure out ways to support him on that mission as he goes down that path. Um, and vice versa. That's what I got. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, but it's not vice versa, though. I'm just meant to support oh, no. each other thing. I just okay, meant yeah. Uh, yeah. What's, the, um, <laughs> yeah. what's the age range that you gals dating? Because you're both in your late 20s. Um, I go I go a year younger, 28, and I aim for at least 45, 40-ish. Carolyn, sir? Yeah, I'd say, um, you know, typically, and this is scientifically, that men just mature at a later age. So, you know, I'm 27, so 30 and, and onward. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so everything that Moff said, I co-signed. I would, I mean, you're probably not going to do it, but I would listen to what he just said there. A few times. No, I loved it. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Um, I got nothing else. <laughs> You're probably tired. My work here is done. I, I am I'm tired. The student, man, the student yeah. becomes the teacher. Look at that. Just like yeah. that. Good. All right, um, everybody. Thank you for watching. Do all you know? Do all the good stuff for the algorithm. Comment below and uh, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not going to be doing unplugged alpha on Wednesday because the show's at noon. I'll be driving. I got loads of miles to cover to get back to Toronto. So um, I'll have to skip this week. Moff, you're going to do Moff's hours on Thursday? You know it. All right. Chris is on, so you can check him out. Um, again, leave some comments below. Ladies, thanks for joining us again. It's always an interesting yeah. dialogue and uh, pieces of conversation that come out of these uh, challenging topics. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks really. All. I do appreciate you guys for sure. All right. Have a good night, guys. See you next time.